Hello everyone, welcome to Gyan Rajniti. Today's topic is India-China relationship, which is a very dynamic relationship. Now we shall discuss about the history of India-China relationship. Before the advent of Western imperialism, India and China were great powers. They had their territories beyond the present borders. That means their early territories were greater than that of today. However, they had no overlapping boundaries or territories. Hence, there, were, there was limited or no political or cultural interactions between the two powers. As a result, neither of them are familiar with each other. When, they, when India and China uh, got independence from, uh, from Britain and Japan respectively, there was great hope. India and China would collaborate with each other for shaping the future of the developing countries in general and that of Asia in particular. During 1950s, there was a friendly relationship between India and China. In 1954, even our Prime Minister, even our former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru concluded the Pancasila Agreement with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai uh, to govern the India-China relationship. The Pancasila principles were based on uh, Buddhism which uh, talks about peaceful coexistence and mutual non-interference in internal, internal affairs. However, during that time, leaders like Sardar Ballabhai Patel was skeptical about India-China relationship. However, this hope was turned into despair. India was one of the first country to recognize People's Republic of China. Nehru supported China's inclusion in the UN Security Council. In 1950, China occupied Tibet and differences arose between India and China over the final settlement of Indo-China border. In 1959, there was a revolt in Tibet and Dalai Lama along with some colleagues uh, came to India and took asylum in India. This made China unhappy. In October, military, in October 1962, military conflicts took place among, along the border. In 1962, China attacked India and captured Indian posts in NEFA. NEFA means Northeastern North Eastern Frontier Agency, which is today's Arunachal Pradesh. There was a huge outcry that Chinese army would occupy parts of India, including Assam. However, within 24 hours, China declared unilateral withdrawal and the war ended. Chinese military occupied Aksai Chin, uh, a part of Jum, present day Jammu and Kashmir, uh, during 1950s and 1960s. After the war of 1962, there was a diplomatic deadlock between the two countries. That means there was no relationship uh, after 1962 war between the two countries. During 1970s, due to change of government in China, relations between the two countries began to improve slowly. In 1976, China and India resumed designation, designating, designating ambassadors to each other. De ambassadors means diplomats. That means in 1976, India and China continued designating diplomats to each other territories. A series of talks organized to resolve all disputes through negotiations during 1980s. The Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Hua paid a return visit to India in June 1981. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi visited China in December 19, 1988. During this visit, both sides agreed to develop and expand bilateral relations in all fields. Since the end of the Cold War, significant changes took place between India and China. Now the relationship acquired strategic and economic dimensions. This is all about the visit of Rajiv Gandhi to Beijing. Bilateral relations have strengthened today. China emerged as the second largest trading partner of India after USA. Bilateral trade between India and China has increased from $338 million in 1992 to more than $18 billion in 2006. More recently, both countries have agreed to cooperate with each other in areas such as bidding for energy deals abroad. India's nuclear tests in 1998, sometimes justified on the grounds of a threat from China, did not stop greater interaction. 
it is true that china was seen as a contributing uh, seen as contributing to build up build up of pakistan's nuclear program china's military relations with bangladesh and myanmar were viewed as a hostile to hostile to indian interests in south asia however none of these issues is likely to lead to conflict between the two one sign of this is that the talks is to resolve the boundary question have continued without interruption and military to military cooperation is increasing indian and chinese leaders and officials visit beijing and new delhi with greater frequency and both sides are becoming more familiar with each other however in recent times there were two great conflicts however this uh, these were not turned into war one is doklam is doklam standoff and the another one was galwan